Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jason, you might know me as Easy Cat, or you might be that one person on Twitter who referred to me as the old man who reads too many young adult books. So, today I'm excited to show you all the books that I read in August. I actually didn't read as many books as I normally do in August, but I read a lot of books that I really enjoyed in August, and I think that's really important. And I read a couple of, like, pretty chonky books, so that's always fun, too. Uh, before we get started, if you enjoy my content, make sure to like and subscribe and all the fun things you can do on YouTube. But also know that I post very regularly on TikTok and Instagram, so if you enjoy what you see here, feel free to jump over to those other platforms and give me a follow there. I'm also Easy Cat, but you can find a link in my something. I think there's a link to, I don't, who knows? Just easy cat, find me. I don't. Let's get started. Okay, so first up is a book I've owned for quite a while. I bought it, uh, I don't know, forever ago, and finally decided to read it because so many people were telling me it was so good, and that was Keeper of the Lost Cities uh, by Shannon Messenger. Now, if you've been here for a while, you know that middle grade books can be very hit or miss for me, and actually this month I read two middle grade books, and I really enjoyed both of them. Um, I think middle grade books run this fine line for me. So sometimes I think a middle grade book, like a good middle grade book to me, is filled with just all this like hope and whimsy that is often kind of missing from young adult and adult books. Like young adult and adult books deal with a lot more with angst and like issues and problems and hard, difficult, but like I like middle grade because a lot of times they're just filled with like tons of joy and hope and whimsy and magic and they're really fun. But a lot of times I can feel that they're written for a middle grade audience. And because the writing then feels a little bit on the, I don't want to say simpler side, but just it feels on the younger side. Sometimes that puts me off or kind of takes me out of the story a little bit. That was not the case with Keeper of the Lost Cities. I already bought the sequel to this. I really, really liked this. Um, so this is kind of like your typical like going to magic school kind of thing. Um, we deal with a character who is a telepath, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, I really liked all of, really all of the characters. I like this idea that there are lost cities where like the magical, the magic is being hidden from like the real world. Like, so it kind of takes place in modern day or does take place in modern day. Um, but there are these like secret cities and secret worlds kind of behind our vision where, um, the, you know, these, these magical schools and things like that are being done. I really liked the characters. I think maybe the only complaint I really had was that I don't know if this book necessarily had like an actual story arc. A lot of things happened, but I don't know if there was like necessarily a beginning, middle and end like you would expect from a book, from a, from any kind of story. But it really didn't bother me because I was very interested in everything that was happening. I was very interested in what she was learning to do. I was very interested in kind of like the mystery of the story. I thought the characters were really great. I thought the world building was really good. Um, I really liked this. And I see that there's like a gajillion books in the series. So I'm excited to um, read more of them. I already bought the second one and I'll probably read it this month, I think, because I'm like kind of kind of hankering for the second book in the series. Um, but thank you to everyone that recommended this to me because I thought it was great. I always start these videos thinking, ah, this is going to be a shorter video than last month because I'm going to be more concise and thoughtful in my thoughts. And then I go off on rambles, but we'll see how it goes. So the next one is The Truth Project. Uh, this is by Dante Medima. Um, Dante Medima actually sent me a copy of this book to read and review. Um, and I got to say, I really liked it. So one thing that was really going for this book is I love books that are told in verse. Um, I don't, there's just something about them that I really enjoy. This book kind of spins that a little bit because there is verse and there's poetry and the story does deal with poetry as well. Um, but it also has like text message chains some of the times. Um, it has like emails sent back and forth. Um, so it has a lot of different things. And then it has like the poetry kind of mixed in with all of that. And I thought it was really effective for telling this story. So essentially, this is a book about a young woman who um, she's doing a project for school where she's like figuring out her genetic makeup. And in the process of doing so, she finds out that the guy she thinks is her father is not her father. And that sends her kind of into this spiral of like an identity crisis and trying to figure out um, who she is and uh, what all of this means for her. And at the same time, she's kind of doing this like poetry type project at school and she wants to like try and reconnect with her actual father and I thought it was really good. I think um, I brought up a lot of like interesting points about what that means for someone, you know, what is family, what defines family, um, you know, why do parents make the choices they make in, you know, in order to protect their kids and um, you know, I, I just, I, I think it was done really, really well. And I liked all of the characters. And like I said, I really liked the presentation of the story. Um, it was also just a really quick read, obviously, because it was told in verse and, and text messages and things like that. I thought it was really well done. Um, I, 
I don't know, I've only read a couple, so I've read a couple books in the past like year and a half that have dealt kind of with the, uh, this adoption idea. And she's not, she's not adopted, but kind of this like, you know, figuring out who is your family and, and finding out that who you thought was your family isn't your family and, and trying to like figure, like reconcile all of that. And this was one of the better ones that I'd read. Um, I feel like I, maybe like three fourths of the way through the book, I was like, well, this is all right. But then by like the fourth of the book, like the third act, I really, really liked the book. Like the third act kind of sold me on the book. I have one minor complaint. So <laughs> in the book, she like writes a poem and then she like presents it at like a poetry, like, I don't want to say contest, but she like presents the poem. And I wish the poem had been a little bit more. Like it felt very short and very quick. And I feel like that was a great moment to have like a, like a strong like story beat and like really like a great message. And I feel like the actual final poem that she like presents in front of everybody was just okay. And it was like really, really short. Like I imagine if she was presenting in front of an audience, it would be less than a minute long. <laughs> it was very short. And it was like kind of like a slam poetry thing. Like I just thought there would be more to it. Um, and when I, after I read it, I was like, oh, okay. But everything around that and like the final, like the climax of the story, I thought was really good. So I kind of let it slide, but I just wish that had been a little bit more. That was my only complaint. So I really liked this. So if you like books told in verse, if you like stuff that deals with like family and, um, you know, genealogy and history and things like that, uh, family history and things like that, I think you'll really enjoy this. So check out The Truth Project. Next book up is one that I got from Book of the Month. So this was Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey. Um, this is a story about a woman who is like going out into, I think it's the Scottish Highlands. Uh, yeah, the Scottish Highlands to reintroduce wolves to um, the ecosystem there. And that's like her job. She's like reintroducing wolves to the ecosystem. So she gets there and like the farmers are like, we don't want the wolves. And then of course someone gets murdered and everybody thinks it's the wolves. And so she's like trying to prove that it's not because she doesn't want people to lose their minds at the wolves. And um, it's a really interesting story. Uh, it's a really interesting story to talk about like humans and nature. And I really like that it, it talks about humanity and the wild and what makes us similar, but also what makes us different. And I just think it does all of that really, really well. Um, the one thing I'll point out about this book is it is not as traumatic as like a little life, but I like to compare it to that in that there's not really a lot of happiness in this book. Like this is a book that's pretty traumatic and heartbreaking and painful all the way through. And it's not a very long book. I mean, that's the thing with a little life is it's like hundreds and hundreds of pages of just trauma. But this is a lot of trauma in, in a short book, and it's definitely a, a book for adults. It's an 18 plus book. I would definitely not recommend it for middle grade or YA. Um, and it, it just deals, I mean, if you're going to read this, I, I really enjoyed it, but please check out Trigger Warnings before you do, because there's a lot going on here, um, especially from like the perspective of animals, but also there's um, a history. So the main character and her sister have dealt with a history of abuse. Um, so that gets discussed a lot. Um, and really there's a lot of discussion about like wolves and wild animals, but like put through the lens of like humans and like the wildness and the ferality of, of like man at some points. Um, and that all kind of circles back to that history of abuse. And so there, there's a lot going on there. So I highly recommend you check out Trigger Warnings if you're going to read this. All said and done, it was a really good book. But if you're going to read it, make sure you're in the right headspace because it's a lot and it's a lot of feelings and there's a lot of really difficult topics discussed in this book. I thought it was absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning. But just know that what you're going into is a book filled with like traumatic experiences um, to tell a really beautiful but ultimately like really heartbreaking story. So yeah, that was Once There Were Wolves. Okay, so the next book, I actually got an uh, advanced reader copy, but through Libro FM. So I listened to this on audiobook, but I'm going to show you the cover on my iPad just to give you a, a visual. So this book is Strange Beasts of China by, I think it's Yan Ji, I think is how you pronounce the last name. Um, but so uh, this book is wild. <laughs> this book is, so this was recommended to me by Laura's Library um, over on TikTok and Instagram. If you don't follow, please, just the, one of the funniest human beings ever. Um, highly recommend their accounts. Um, so Strange Beasts of China. Okay. First of all, I'm going to compare it to something, but it's something that a lot of my followers probably haven't seen so that I'll explain it. This really reminded me of this anime called Mushishi. Um, and that anime, it deals with this guy who like every week, it's like slice of life episodes where he like goes to different towns and he like helps exercise like yokai or ghosts or demons across like the Japanese countryside. 
So this book reminded me a lot of that. So this is like speculative fiction um, that deals with China in modern day and all, and, and there's like humans and then there's like different types of beasts, which are like human-like creatures who are living amongst the humans and all have like special, almost like abilities or powers or like history or it's, it's so, this book is so hard to describe. Um, and each chapter deals with a different type of beast. Um, but it all focuses around one main character who writes stories about beasts, who is then like kind of experiencing the different beasts in her life. Um, it is such an interesting book. Um, it really, I mean, there's definitely like a lot of really deep discussion you could have about like the nature of these beasts and the way humans treat them. And I'm sure there's like racial implications that are being like kind of spun into this narrative. Um, the way we treat people who are different than us, the way we treat people who we think are below us. There's like classist ideas in here, but it's all super subtle um, and really just wo woven into this just like very weird, interesting narrative. Um, this book was wild. I, I cannot stress that enough. And every book, every chapter ends. So you kind of get like a little bit of like what the type of beast is at the beginning of the chapter. And then you kind of experience a story about that beast, which all of the stories are kind of told almost in like a crime noir kind of feel like that's the feeling I got from it. Um, and then at the end of the beast, you get like a description of that beast and like then kind of understand like how everything it's almost like a reveal to reveal to you like why they were able to do what they did in the chapter because, ah, well, this beast is able to regenerate after they die out of the ashes of their loved one. And, and then you're like, oh, okay, so that's why they were able to do It's a wild book. If you like really kind of weird and creepy kind of things, and if you like, um, if you're looking for like speculative fiction with like a little, like a realistic fantasy edge, but you're tired of like European tropes and European history and European mythology, and you want to try something that has more of that Asian inspiration to it. I, I mean, I really liked this, but it definitely was a book where every chapter I'd finish the chapter and be like, well, well that was weird. <laughs> um, it's, it's just, a, it's a wild book. Um, if you like stuff like Murakami, I think you would really like this because he kind of like lives in that kind of wild headspace as well, um, where every chapter you're like, Ooh, what just happened? <laughs> um, and that, that definitely is the feeling I got from Strange Beasts of China. But I did enjoy this book. And I think if anything I just said, and you were like, yeah, oh yeah, that sounds cool. I think you should check it out. Because I think it's a book that's going to fly under the radar. And I think it's a really cool and really unique story that I hope more people read. So Strange Beasts of China. Next one up was, so the next one up is a young adult uh, contemporary story. So this is Donuts and Other Proclamations of Love by Jared Reck. Okay, so this is a story about a young man, Oscar, and his grandfather, and they run a food truck. And um, Oscar really wants to, like, get into the food truck business after he graduates high school, and he meets this girl who is, like, I mean, she's, like, on a roll, all that stuff, and she has this plan that she's pitching to take. So basically the school has been serving apples every day to all the students and the apples are like terrible. Like they're the worst tasting apples ever. So she's like, everybody's throwing them away. We're wasting apples. So she has this plan to like collect all the apples and then basically use the food truck to like turn them into like pastries in order to like not waste food. And you know, she like kind of wraps him up in this story. And then there's like a love story between the two. And it also deals with, um, you know, the main character is dealing with like his heritage and he lost his his parents. So he's living with his grandfather and it's dealing, uh, the book also deals with like, um, just all kind, just all kinds of different like little elements. And his grandfather is Swedish. So there's a lot of discussion about like, um, just Swedish families and Swedish um, heritage. And, um, you know, his grandfather kind of makes a plan at one point for Oscar to go back to Sweden to like see where he came from. And it was just interesting. I can't remember the last time I read something that like really like focused on Swedish representation, um, which I thought was really interesting. One side note I will mention is that I did listen to this initially on audio book. Um, I was able to get the audio book from my library, like after I bought the book, I was like, I'll just listen to it in the car. And the, the grandfather really sounds like the guy from Frozen who's like, woohoo, you like that guy, <laughs> which threw me off at first, but then I got really into the story. So it was all okay. I thought it was really cute. Um, it does have some representation and I, I liked I thought the story was just a, like, there's so many young adult books that are like this, that are like cute little rom-coms, that, that it's hard for them to set themselves apart. But I don't know, I really liked this. I liked the discussion of food. Um, I liked 
all of the characters. Um, I Something that drives me crazy, and I, I know people have different feelings about this, so this is not to say that it's wrong that authors do this, because I think there's plenty of reasons when it's okay to do this, but so many young adult books have like the two main characters meet and then all of a sudden they're in love. And that sometimes drives me crazy. <laughs> and with these two, I really felt like I watched their relationship develop. Like I watched them fall in love and I liked that. Like I liked watching them start to care for each other. It kind of has like an enemies to lovers element to it. Um, but not in a, sometimes enemies to lovers to me feels like abusive, like hateful to lovers and I don't like that. This was just like, oh, I don't really like, we don't really like each other to like, eh, you know, I think we like each other. And I liked it. Um, like I said, I like the elements of food. I liked the Swedish historicalness of it, the Swedish heritage of it. It just all really worked for me. And it was a book that I, this kind of, I mentioned this with a book earlier. It was a book that like halfway through, I was like, I don't know if this book is really going to stand out to me. And by the end, I was like, yeah, okay. I liked that. Um, by the end of the book, it really deals with some more um, serious topics, some more heavy topics, but I think it did it really well and it never uh, was too much. Like I think it did it in a really respectful, good way that that really like helped to fuel the story with something a little bit deeper than just we're gonna make donuts out of apples, right? Like there was definitely like some more meat to this story than I was initially expecting. And all of the, the meatiness of the story was like surprising. It was never, uh, so often I feel like you're like, oh, well, I know what's gonna happen. And this book was not that way. Like, I feel like every time it introduced something new and, and the way it talked about his family and like what they went through, I just thought it was all really well done. And it was a really cute story. So if you're looking for like, it's a little dramatic. It's not the lightest story I've ever read, but it is, if you're looking for like a YA contemporary to like take a break from fantasy, which is definitely what I was looking for, this will definitely hit the spot. So check it out. Oh, this next one. I don't even know how to talk about this one. I um, conf I, I don't even know. So I, if you follow me on TikTok, you'll know that this month I picked up the Foxhole Court. I got these covers. Um, part of why I wanted to read the series was because these covers are so gorgeous. Uh, I picked them up on Instagram. And um, so I picked up this series because to me, this looks a lot like Haikyuu. I'm a big fan of Haikyuu. Um, and so I was like, ooh, a sports type book. Sign me up. This is not like Haikyuu. <laughs> this story is like, it's kind of like a sports drama mixed with like a crime, almost like mafia story. Eh? Um, and I feel like I can't give you a proper review of it because the book doesn't really end. Like it, it's a trilogy and I feel like the book doesn't really end. Like it almost feels like the three books are all just like one big book, but they split it into three books. So I don't feel comfortable reviewing it yet necessarily because I feel like I need to read the other two books to see what actually happens because there wasn't even like a full story arc in this book necessarily. You get introduced to a lot of characters. Uh, the characters are really like over the top, snarky, bitter, mean to each other. Um, there's, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know that I, I, I won't say that I would recommend or not recommend this book yet. Uh, I've heard from a lot of people that you should look into trigger warnings if you're going to read this book. Um, I didn't notice a ton of that in the first book, but I can definitely see where it could lead into that because there is a lot of like family and drama and crime and blah, blah, blah. like there's a lot of that. So I can see it only escalating from here. And the way the characters talk to each other is like pretty abusive um, and pretty hateful. Uh, so I would just look, like if you're gonna look into this, don't just jump into it like I did, like do a little research on your own first. I think by the end of the trilogy, I may end up really liking it because there are some things that I do enjoy about it and I like a good sports story and I kind of like the like mafia aspect of it. I just don't feel comfortable recommending it yet because like I said, I, I don't feel like I've even gotten a full story out of book one. <laughs> I definitely feel like I need to read the other two before I can say, ah, this is what this series is about. And this is the point it's trying to convey. I, I couldn't tell you that now. Um, but it was a fun, quick read. And I am, st I'm definitely still want to read the other two. It did, did not put me off of wanting to read the other two. I just don't know it, what feelings I have about it yet. So that's the foxhole court. <laughs> Okay, so next up is another young adult book. So this is How We Fall Apart. This is by Katie Zhao. Um, this is very much Dark Academia, um, Gossip Girl, um, Pretty Little Liars, that type of story, but with um, a lot of Asian um, representation. Uh, and that's 
kind of the nature of the book. So if you've read and enjoyed things like um, One of Us is Lying, if you've uh, read more recently Ace of Spades, though I'll talk about kind of how they differ, or differ in a second, um, this is gonna, this is kind of similar, right? So basically, uh, one student that was like doing really well in school dies, and then her four friends are basically suspects, and there is a like, secret identity person who is like texting their secrets out to the rest of the school um, to try and like um, shame them into turning on each other so that you eventually figure out like who did it. It's like this who done it, right? Um, first and foremost, I think this book was good and I liked the who done it nature and I um, I guessed it a little bit before the end, but not so far before the end that I was like, ah, it's super predictable. Um, I thought all of the characters and their unique secrets and their unique backstories were interesting. Um, I like stuff like Pretty Little Liars and Gossip Girl, so it worked for me. The one thing I will mention is that I think, I feel like the only thing that sets it apart from other books like this is that it has a lot of Asian representation. And I don't want to discount that because I think that's super important and I think it's cool that it has that. But I wish there had maybe been something else because I do worry that this book is going to get lost in the shuffle of books like it because it is so similar to other books of this nature. And I don't, when I finished it, I don't know if I felt like it stood out or if it did a whole lot to like elevate itself um, from the pack because there are just so many books like this. Ever since, you know, with One of Us is Lying, like there's so many books out there and so many books coming out that have this kind of a story being told. I worry this one could get lost in the shuffle because it just isn't different enough. Um, but that being said, I still liked it. I mean, the thing with Ace of Spades is like, Ace of Spades definitely like elevates itself, but it does so at the cost of like dealing with really heavy, intense issues of racism, right? I mean, that book is a lot. And I think for some people, it's gonna be too much. They're not gonna be able to handle it because it is really, uh, I've talked to some people that that book was really triggering for, and I understand why. Um, that book is like really steeped in, in really heavy racial themes. Um, this book does deal with racial themes, but it's, uh, it, and it's dealing with it, you know, a lot from the perspective of just like that, uh, model my, the model minority, um, myth. And it's also dealing with just these kids trying so hard to please their parents and, um, you know, ha make their parents proud of them and like what lengths they'll go to, to accomplish that. Um, so it does utilize the representation in a really good way for this story. I just, like I said, the actual story, like if you take away the representation part and just look at the actual like who done it nature, there's nothing about this particular book of this kind of story that you haven't seen done probably a hundred times before if you like this type of story. But I say all of that to say that I still really liked how we fall apart. And I think if, if you hear, you know, something like one of us is lying, but with a lot more representation and especially Asian representation. And you say, wow, that sounds great. Then I think you should absolutely pick it up because that's really what it is. And it does that really, really well. So check out how we fall apart. If you follow me on TikTok and Instagram, you know that this month I did a buddy read along with a bunch of other book talkers of The Eye of the World, the first book in The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. Um, first of all, I just wanna say to everyone that did the read along with us, this was so immensely fun um, to do this read along with just a bunch of other amazing people. And I know a lot of my followers are reading along with us and just hearing their feedback was really great. I have read the first three books of this series before, but it's been a while. So I wanted to reread because I want to try and get through the series, especially with the new um, Amazon show coming out, right? Um, I really like this. I love high fantasy. I described this as wholesome high fantasy. Let me explain because I think whole high fantasy fans will be like, what? Um, it's like high fantasy, but it's like not like gross you out high fantasy, which I would think of like Game of Thrones, right? Like Game of Thrones is like very intense adult high fantasy. This is like much more palatable, enjoyable, fun high fantasy, more in the line of like Tolkien. Um, and I really like it. I love all the characters. I think they're all just super unique. Um, we just did our live stream last night when we were talking about this book and our thoughts. And I think my only really major complaint is the third act feels rushed times 10. Like it's so rushed that it gets co confusing and muddled at points where you're just like, wait, what just, what just happened? What, what just happened? Um, but everything else in the book I really liked. I liked the story. I liked the characters. I liked the world. I liked the magic. I just really enjoyed it. And I'm so excited. I just started The Great Hunt um, this morning. So 
I'm going to keep reading them. Uh, but this was a this was a joy to read again. Um, there was so much that I feel like I missed the first time that I picked up on the second time. Uh, and it was absolutely made even better by getting to read it with some really amazing people and then discuss it every week. And I hope we continue doing that because it was just a lot of fun. So that is The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Okay, so the next book is another middle grade book. Um, I haven't talked about this on TikTok yet. I just recently finished it. I don't know if I'll do a review. I probably will. So this is Tail Spinners Saving Fable by Scott Rentgen. Um, this is, oh, the lighting is kind of weird on this book. There we go. So this is a middle grade book um, that it's such a cool story. So basically it takes place in a world where characters exist pre getting put into our stories, like the stories that authors write for our world. So these characters are living in and around each other and they at some point get selected to go to like protagonist school or antagonist school or side character school where they learn how to be a character and then they get graded. And if they do well enough, they get sent off to be in a story that an author writes. And this world is just full of all of the things you would think about, right? There's like um, bookmarks are actual people in this world and brainstorms are people in this world and dog ears are actually like dogs that are running around and it's so creative <laughs> like it's just so creative and it seems like a story I'm sure there's other things like this out there but it just seems like such an obvious idea for a story uh, but I think it was pulled it's pulled off really well um, every time a new element or a new thing was introduced that was like like we get introduced to a place where characters who got put in books or stories that never got finished, like where they go. Like every time something new is introduced in this book, I was always like, well, that isn't that isn't that just the most creative? Like, what a thought. It it just is like a book full of whimsy and fun, and I I really liked it. So this is gonna be a trilogy. There are two books out so far. The third book's actually coming out in September. So I think I'm gonna try and read the second book so that I can read the third book, but I really just thought it was great. It was like such a pleasant surprise. I was like, well, isn't this just the darn cutest thing and like super creative and fun? And um, I really liked it. I liked the main character. I liked the story. I just, I, I just thought all the elements were so fun. It does reference like actual characters from actual books in our world um, in really fun and creative ways. I thought that was super cute. Um, it just really worked for me. And so, I mean, like I said, a lot of times middle grade books don't work for me, but this is a book that I think if you're looking for something, especially that you want to like read as like a parent and, and child together, I think this would be a great option because I, I think both of you are going to get a lot out of it because it's just, it's just so fun. It's just so fun. So that is Saving Fable. All right. So last book I read this month and you may, I'm going to make a TikTok about this today. I haven't had the chance to do it yet, but I'm going to rave about this book. Um, because I I just absolutely loved it. Um, so this is Sky Without Stars, and this is by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell. This is part of a trilogy. Um, the trilogy is called The System Divine. Um, okay, so essentially, stick with me. This is a Les Mis retelling. So Les Mis, the like um, story that's now a musical, that's a, like a French book and all of that, right? It's a retelling, but in space. <laughs> It's a sci-fi Les Mis. It's like Les Mis meets Firefly. Um, we follow three characters, uh, but what I liked about it is that it was all told in third person. Um, so you, there was never any confusion as to which character we were following. Um, I thought the story was told really, really well. There were so many nods to Les Mis. So if you like Les Mis, like I really enjoy Les Mis, um, then you're going to see all these like little hints to it within the story. And and it's not told in the same like narrative structure as Les Mis, which I think was an awesome choice because at first you're not really going to know who everyone is in Les Mis. And then as it gets revealed, you're going to be, it's like fun to, to like try and pinpoint and like figure out like, oh, that's, you know, this character. Oh, that's this character. Oh, that's this moment in the, in the musical or in the book, right? I just really liked it. And it it came at a time where I was like, oh my, I had literally said three days before starting this book, like, oh my God, I need to take a break from YA because I'm getting like, I'm getting like a little burnt out on YA. I need a break. And so what happened was if Simon Teen sees this, they're going to love this because this is like, this is like the dream. This is like what they hope happens, right? So Simon Teen has sent me a box of books and inside that box was the third book in this series. And I thought the book just looked gorgeous. I looked inside, the maps were really cool. And so I was like, oh, I want to look into this. So I looked into it and found the first book and read basically Les Mis, sci-fi Les Mis. And I was like, that sounds awesome. So I picked up the first book 
And I mean, I, I thought this was going to take me like a week to read. I read this in like three days because I could not put it down. Um, I just really liked it. Um, I, I've looked on, so I've looked at some reviews. I know a lot of people feel like the first book is the weakest in the trilogy. Um, they feel like the second and third are like way better. And I already loved book one, so I can't wait. I already ordered book two. It should be here tomorrow. And of course, I already have book three because it was sent to me. Um, but this book, this came out in 2019. I feel like I've never seen anyone on Book Talk or Bookstagram talk about it, which is wild to me because I devoured this book. I, I just, especially if you love like YA stuff, there's a love triangle. Normally I don't like, this book was a lot of things I normally don't like, right? Like I normally don't like love triangles. I was all in for this one. I was like, who are, who's gonna end up with who? Ah! Like I was very much involved. I was very much invested. This book just like ticked all the right boxes for me. Um, if I have one in very minor complaint, um, and I think this will be a bigger complaint for some and a smaller complaint for others, um, but there really is not a whole lot of representation of any kind in this book. Like this book very much centers on, it, it, ta it really utilizes the French background of this story and like the French Revolution background of this story, um, but it doesn't really do a lot to like add representation to the story, which maybe the other books will, but that definitely was not in this one. So that was a little bit of a complaint, but um, everything else, all everything else I thought was really, really great. So I really liked this book. Um, and I'm so stoked to read the second one. I'm like waiting. I'm like, please come, please come in the mail because I can't wait to start reading it. Um, I'm probably going to devour the other two books this month, which I normally don't do. I normally read the first book. And I'm like, I really liked that. And then wait a year before reading the rest of the trilogy. That will not be the case with this because I cannot wait to find out what happens next. Oh, and one more thing I want to say. I, I feel like so many... YA books are guilty of this thing where they don't, the first book doesn't have like a third act. It just kind of ends as soon as the action starts because they want you to buy the second book. Sky Without Stars does end with some like cliffhangers and some things that make you want to keep going, but it does have a, a very like defined beginning, middle, and end. And I am so appreciative <laughs> because I'm so tired of YA books that won't just like finish a story arc in their first book because it's so important for you to pick up the second book. This book does all of that correctly for me. Beginning, middle, end, cliffhangers that make me want to keep going. Perfect. Love it. More of that. Thank you. Sky That Stars, definitely check it out. I loved it. And that is everything that I read in the month of August. Did you read anything amazing in August? Did you read any of these books in August? Uh, I feel like I did, I read more obscure books this month. I don't know if obscure is the right word, but like books that were not as like being talked about all over the place on the internet this month. A lot of times I'm reading like the hot books. This month I was like, I'm just gonna read some stuff that's been on my TBR that I'm interested in, right? Um, but did you read anything great in August? Did you see any of these that you thought, wow, I really want to pick that up. I'm so excited to read that. Let me know in the comments. Um, as always, make sure to like and subscribe. Check uh, here, but also on uh, TikTok and Instagram. TikTok, I post a couple times a day. And Instagram, I post a couple times a week. And of course, YouTube, you guys know I post a couple times a month. So you can see all of my content across all three of those channels if you follow me in all of the, follow me in all of the places. But anyway, I hope you have a great September. I hope you read lots of books. And as always, happy reading.